So what did OCR think of their first run of the new A-level examinations in summer 2017? Well, I've come all the way here to Birmingham to hopefully find out more about what they thought of their own exams. So, I went to Birmingham. It was great. I'm back now. It's dark outside. I'm not just at work really, really late. It's just the time of year. So, what did they say? They told me all sorts of things. I mean, notes for you and everything. So they told me all sorts of things. The biggest thing that they pointed out was, right at the start, the big difference when they changed to the, this new specification in 2015 and how that has impacted the 2017 exams and things that they've know, they now know moving forward. I suppose one of the biggest things then that they said at the start of this was the amount of recall reduction that's taking place. So it's not just recall this, state the definition for that, quote that functional group, it's definitely a lot more application. And they're freely admitting this, which is important. You need to be able to apply more, which means do more questions and make less flashcards. So let's get the flashcards stacked down and the past exam question packs up. That's the most important thing to be looking at early on. That's like your top start to the course thing as well. The other thing they mentioned was the multiple choice. They said the multiple choice are probably best answered at the end. There's loads of conflicting sort of arguments around this and some people prefer to do them first. They said the multiple choice questions often can be very poorly answered because they're not seeing working out and also people are doing them at the start and then kind of leaving half of them blank. Believe it or not, People are leaving them blank. It's multiple choice, guys. You've got to always put answers for these. Now, if it's me, I'd do them at the end, but I'd make sure that I have more than a mark a minute because what they also freely admit is that there are some calculations in there which will take longer. And actually, if they were elsewhere in the paper, it would be worth more than one mark, but you've got to make sure you've got the time to do it. Now, there's lots of explanations we'll do in class about how we can tackle multiple choice, but just to echo what I said a few seconds ago, show working out. You're not gonna get any marks for it, but all that white space, as they call it, is for you to put your working out into. So do make sure that you're making the most of it. Level response, level response questions. Now, they gave us some examples of these level response questions that are really hard for us to kind of predict exactly what depth they're gonna go into, but they made it quite clear that lots of people are missing out on this very top mark point. One of the reasons is, and it's a bit weird, I suppose, in a way, is people are writing too much. They're just putting too much information. And then because you write too much and you put these overly dramatic sen sentences together, I can't form a sentence, but you put all these overly dramatic sentences together, but you miss the actual science that you're meant to be putting in there. So their recommendation is bullet points, read the question again, read your bullet points again, and you'll notice if you've left anything out. The other thing is, if they ask you for calculations as part of a leveled response question, show your working out because you will get pushed up the levels a little bit, even if part of your working out is okay. So you've got to make sure that all the working out is shown. You can't get past a certain level without the right kind of working out or numbers section. So your written part could be as good as it needs to be, but you're never going to get full marks. This next section I'm going to call bad times. Bad times. So these are times when things are going bad. And I have actually done a video um, alongside this one, which is our top five of things that they say you're getting wrong, but there's other things in the papers in general that they've noticed people are just making mistakes with. And obviously we'll go through these in college, but most importantly right now, it's major versus minor. So that's in your electrophilic addition of alkenes. That's knowing about carbocation stability and which route is more preferred based on that stability. Now that was new to the spec when it changed in 2015. And so you can bet they're gonna keep tackling that one over and over and over because they need to develop this question base of it to show us as teachers how we could be teaching it. Uh, the other one was buffers, upper six students, buffers. Nobody likes buffers, but they know you don't like buffers. So they're gonna put buffers in there. The guy was making it really clear that examiners aren't gonna try and trick you, but they are looking to give you a challenge. It is a fight, effectively. And so if buffers need to be buffed up, then buff up on your buffers. That's pretty good, actually. That's a good sentence right there. Uh, reducing percentage errors was another one, a little tricky one, a little kind of in between. Not really a top five of things people are getting wrong, just kind of a little one marker here and there, but reducing percentage errors. Reducing percentage errors means if you've got the equipment error uh, percentage calculation for a piece of apparatus, it's about how you could make that percentage smaller. And it is kind of a statistics game. It's about how could you physically make that percentage smaller. 
Most people, when they're doing the A-level question, they kind of run for the hills at the moment at this point and just say, change the equipment, make the equipment better, make it with a smaller margin of error, and there you go, you solve the problem. But there are other ways you can do it as well. You can actually reduce the percentage error that you take in a reading by, for example, in a titration, you're going to have to put in there the average titer. So if you're doing the uh, percentage error calculation of a BRAP, you do two times the error margin divided by the reading you took. If you can physically double the reading you took, then you're going to make the percentage overall smaller at the end. So how do you double the reading you took? By halving the concentration. It's a bit sneaky, and you might not think that actually that's making things any better, but it is. It's reducing that percentage, and that's exactly what the question is asking you for. So don't just think, what glassware can I change to? Do I need to use a different piece of kit? Think, is there anything about the solutions you could alter to make it run a little bit more your way? That's kind of it for the general overview of them reviewing the series and giving you general tips about the new OCR A-level. I suppose now, if you haven't already, you need to watch the top five. So those are the top five things that examiners think you need to improve on. And otherwise, I'll leave you to the rest of our amazing playlists. Happy revising.